Hello guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, this is a little filler video, uh, I guess for you guys, uh, as there is still voting going on in my channel. And, uh, I don't know, it's just been a lot of bullshit going around lately and just decided to turn off the switch for a bit and record a video with my friend Richard and, uh, and, uh, I don't know. So hopefully by the time you guys see Let's Plays again, um, I'll still, I'll still be able to kind of hold my own when it comes to recording. So, uh, but we still don't have a winner. So if you haven't voted yet, please, uh, vote, um, go back on the video and vote. Uh, you should be able to see it. Um, it's, it was the last one I uploaded. So if you somehow missed it, if YouTube didn't show it in your subscription box, please vote. Um, but because I will be closing it very soon because it's almost been up for a few weeks now. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, so a lot of people have been asking me about Resident Evil 6. Now, I never even covered this game. I didn't do a review on it like I did Raccoon City. And the only thing you guys saw was me going to the midnight launch and adding it into my collection. Well, basically, I've been getting a lot of questions. And a lot of things have been circulating around my channel. Um, on what I thought about it. And I have Richard here. Say hello, Richard. Hello, guys. What's up? And you guys might remember him from the Let's Play Let's Have Fun videos that we did and just as a friend altogether. Uh, Andy also has his own channel. Link is in the description. You guys probably... You might be already subscribed to him because well, I, I, don't, I don't know. Somehow you guys could find him. But, yeah. So, anyway, we're here to talk about Resident Evil 6. Now... The main reason why I decided to do this video with Richard is because it's it's just good to have another person there with you than me just talking to myself most of the time. Yeah. So get a second opinion. Yeah, and different. Yeah, same opinions or even different ones. Uh, okay, so let's get to the bases. The we're obviously going to talk about the things that we don't really like about Resident Evil Six. I think we should start off with that. Um, now I'm going to start this off and say that the first thing that really stuck out was just the the four campaigns altogether. I I love the campaigns, I love the characters, but the story is just not very solid this time around. Uh yeah. Um well, I like I thought the story was all right for what it was, but yeah. my main problem with it was that it was a much smaller story. So, like, compared to Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5, the story was more like maybe six to seven hours long. But the thing about Resident Evil 6 is that, like, it tries to compensate for that by adding in more perspectives. So, like, okay, we get to see things from all these, you know, points of view. But, like, I kind of missed the, uh, the single narrative, kind of like Resident Evil 4, 5, 3, where it was just, like, one character yeah. and one like one long story maybe like 12 to 25 hours long depending on how good you are yeah so and it just yeah. felt less effective to me most of the time I, yeah i think that the story altogether was all right but i just didn't really feel that that dramatic mm -hmm. uh thing a lot of plot holes by the way a lot of plot i thought like i thought some moments were trying to be dramatic and like sometimes it was okay like you know yeah i'm getting the the drama moment or the drama tone but like a lot of the times it just felt like it wasn't really succeeding and that the trailers kind of made it more dramatic than what it really was yeah and uh one of the things that bugged me a little bit was that this game doesn't really reference the last game in the series and many were talking and, about that last night yeah like it it references wesker a couple times, and uh, it even has some Resident Evil 2 references with William Birkin, but that's about it. I feel as though, like, it kind of pulled a Code Veronica here, where if it weren't for those few lines, you could skip out on this game, and no impact on the story, like, you wouldn't really be, like, missing anything. Exactly. The connection just isn't there like it was between 4 and 5, and, and it's just... Things just weren't dramatic. I didn't end up caring for much of the newer characters that are in here, and there's Same. plenty of plot holes, like you know the virus just being contained, and the the story just didn't feel 
it just kind of felt jumpy. It was kind of all over the place. Yeah. I thought one of the biggest plot holes was that, like, Neo Umbrella was a to fund all this military weapons what equipment. a lazy fucking the idea. works neo and umbrella. it's like neo umbrella like i yeah i don't know i mean yeah umbrella's dead and they were i don't i don't know what they were trying to do with that but uh it didn't go anywhere didn't work it didn't work um right. and you know like this video does this video have spoilers can we talk about uh, spoilers sure i mean we we if you guys look if you guys haven't played resident Evil 6 yet uh, then I guess if you if you don't want to hear spoilers, then just turn off the video, because uh, <laughs> we have to because you can't really have a full discussion. Kinda, yeah. But um, uh, Carla, I didn't like Carla as a character that much. I, cool. I mean, I I love her in Mercenaries because I think she has a great loadout, and I like her melee moves. But in the in like terms of story, I thought she was just like another forgettable character. Like, and when Ada yeah, just like Simmons. Simmons was a forgettable. He's not girl. very menacing like Wesker was, and if they tried to go no. for that, no. it's just who huh. the fuck is Simmons? Yeah, like I feel like Capcom with every Resident Evil game they make, they always introduce new characters that fans don't really care about. And kind of like Cheva, you know, Cheva. Yeah, I guess you could argue whether or not Cheva was there from the beginning, or whether she was there due to allegations of racism. But that's just another story all on its own. But like in Resident Evil Six, like we have uh, we have Pierce who I did not care for at all. I was just missing Jill the whole time. I didn't know why she wasn't even brought up in the writing process. She's never mentioned. Um, we have Sherry was cool because I really liked her character in this, but I feel like yeah, I feel like they didn't do enough with they Sherry. Didn't. And with its own and, campaign, you would think they would, because that's what we're focusing yeah. on about how the campaigns are. They're still good, but and it, they both have, they all have a lot of plot holes, and they have a lot of characters that just they do. don't, they do. that just don't necessarily need to be there, or it, they're there, but they just don't have much going for it. And I think that people talk about Resident Evil Five having a bad story. Well, wait till you play this, because honest, not not saying <laughs> thought, that it's necessarily bad. I'm just saying that. How could you say RE5? It's it's not it's not a bad story. It's just kind of forgettable yeah. in terms of Resident Evil and compared to RE5, you know, I don't, it's very, very I don't know if that's like the, because the story is bad or because we're older and we're becoming more bitter, but yeah, um, probably is it. <laughs> that's that just, that just a sad truth of things. I mean, hey, I like the RE5 story. So I still do. Um, Fuck that. I you know, like I think me and you are really like we we love resident Evil 5 and we are definitely in the minority when i say that you're right um because many people hated re5 and i don't understand why because it's very similar to 4 very. in more ways than one uh, i will i don't know if i will but i might make a video noting the similarities between the two games it's pretty much the same game just better graphics you're in africa you have a partner but whatever you know i didn't like like it's not like i hated re5 because it wasn't scary enough or anything and same case with resident evil 6 you know i guess resident evil was just going in a more action-oriented direction uh it kind of switched around because resident evil was always kind of like a survival horror game with action elements but now it's an action game with mild horror elements so like if you ask me maybe they should return to the series roots but if they did what re5 did i would have been fine that would have been fine well i mean so we just covered the campaigns and we just basically next time guys well capcom uh please make it yeah. one campaign please yeah i me and richard campaign. were sketchy about it you can probably watch the demo let's play that we did back in july i always questioned the campaigns i thought it would be cool how they they wrapped around each other, but they can't wrap around each other with a bunch of holes in between. And uh, it's mm -hmm. just like, you know, Chris says to Jake, oh, when we get out of here, I'll tell you everything. They never see each other again. It's just one of those things. No, they that, don't. You know, Chris Redfield is my favorite character. One of, you know, right next to Jill, obviously, the two classic characters. Yeah. But I love this campaign. I love the characters. But the characters is what really kept it going. If, there, if it wasn't for the characters, I wouldn't care much for the game. And and when you say characters, you mean Chris, Leon, and uh, 
Sherry, most likely, because the other characters weren't really that memorable. Yeah, Jake was very forgettable, was despite his Jake background. Jake was... Uh, just lazy. Jake was... He was uh, cool in a way, but he felt really tacked on just by labeling him Wesker's exactly. son. Exactly, and we were saying this and last night, too. It's yeah, just a lazy I'm, character. I'm just bringing up, like, points for the video, but, like, uh, I didn't really, like, think Jake was as cool as Wesker. I think... It was just a lazy attempt to try and bring back that Wesker vibe. And it didn't do which that. Which makes me wonder... Yeah, it makes me wonder, why didn't you just bring Wesker back altogether? Um, but, like, I, I don't really want him back either way, because exactly. he's dead. Yeah. He blew up in a volcano, but... We just um, don't know what they're doing with the writing. Whoever's in charge of yeah, this... Yeah, like, Pierce, Pierce, I just... I, I thought he was very, um... Like, he had a good personality... And he was very interesting to watch in the cutscenes, but like I'm thinking to myself, wouldn't this be so like a lot better if it was Jill, or if we were watching how Jill was looking for Chris, or like just imagine Jill being in that bar scene trying to convince Chris to come back. Like you know how emotional exactly. that would be between Chris and Jill. Um, and you saw how it was in RE Five when she was in the battle suit. And I'm just asking you, what the hell was wrong <laughs> with that? All right, well we, I mean. Um, we covered the campaigns for the most part. Now, I want to really get into the gameplay. Now, this is where things get interesting. Because the gameplay is and all the mechanics, many of them are very sloppy, very tacked on. First major complaint is the movement. Well, yeah, or you go on. Well, yeah. Well, the first major complaint for me is the movement. Mm -hmm. The way everything moved... Uh, flowed with each campaign. Everybody kind of has their own style. Like, kind of Chris kind of runs like, with his arms to his side, Leon runs. I'm just thinking, well, first of all, yeah. the camera angles are getting fixed, so that's fine. But you shouldn't have to fix the fucking camera angles for a game. They should already be fixed. It's just I felt the running and the way you maneuvered your characters was just very, very weird. I didn't feel mm -hmm. that heavy feeling that I got from RE4. Yeah. I didn't feel that thickness in the gameplay. I didn't feel like when I shot someone, I like felt it. In this game, with the moving and the running and shooting and stuff and walking and shooting, it just it doesn't feel mm -hmm. complete to me. And that goes for all, all four campaigns. You know, it, it's and it's, and the the reason for that is because Capcom uh, they kind of wanted to make everything more fluent and eliminate the tank controls, and which is what they did. I guess they were just trying to uh, open up to a broader audience by making the controls more um, user-friendly. But then, like like you said, you know, it, it just kind of takes away the impact and the heftiness to everything. Yeah. They like, when still... you shoot someone in this game, like, it, it feels like they don't really react yeah. to it. Whereas in RE5, if you shot you someone, they shit. would... Yeah, you felt that shit. Yeah, you did. I mean, and... it's... It, they can eliminate the tank controls and still make it feel heavy and solid. But they don't, mm -hmm. and I don't know. And I was like, in in our demo video, I was complaining about how we were like we were running without pressing a button. Yeah. And I didn't really like that. I thought it was like this is just me nitpicking, but like I didn't really like how whenever you ran, it was it felt too fast. It felt like the animation was a bit awkward, and I kind of missed just holding the A button or the X button. Yeah. And, like, your character would, like, just hold the gun up to the side of his head or to the Missed side. That. yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, like, I... Those are just, like, you know, minor complaints. They don't really affect the gameplay experience, but it would... Like, it's just more of, like, a... I don't know, a sense of nostalgia and just, like... It feels like that would belong in a Resident Evil You're game. Right. And seeing how they took that out in 6, it's just kind of like, eh, you know, it feels very weird. Um... Honestly, like you said, if it weren't for the uh, the main characters coming back, it would just feel like another shooter. Exactly, and and that's that's not what we're supposed to feel in a Resident Evil game. And this one is definitely one of the more forgettable ones in the series, and that's just the truth. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, I want to talk about the health. Okay, now th oh, this is God. something that okay, I don't know if you guys have a problem with this, and, and that includes this includes the dying last stand system, whatever you want to call it. It is mm -hmm. fucking terrible. I seriously hate this health system with a passion. I miss the bars. I do too. I miss the bars. Yeah. Uh, that RE four and five offered. What the hell was wrong with that? Really? And I miss. Mm -hmm. I mean, the health system in this game. 
is just like blocks or whatever and the herb capsules and stuff that was kind of easy to get used to um but i just think that the health system it doesn't flow well and i understand you're taking a different approach yeah uh, especially the dying thing the dying is very cheap you like fall on the ground first of all and re5 when you were dying you could actually you're actually standing up and you can actually keep walking uh when you're crawling on the ground you move very slow um, there's no reason why they had to throw you on the ground. They couldn't just make it like RE5 when you're put into dying. Um, mm-hmm. and I just think that it was very, it was just, it's very like clunky. Uh, your AI partner doesn't always get you up. And I think it's very cheap as well because you can get picked up by your partner that has a capsule. And then right when you get up, you can get hit right there. Now that wasn't RE5 too. Yeah, I know. But it was easier to avoid enemies with kind of like, Dude, with just the dying system in RE5, it it moved a little bit better because you were standing up. You could still move away from enemies when yeah. you were crawling. You were you were slow when you were moving, but like it just kind of, I don't know. It was a little bit easier to avoid hits. Yeah, I'm not saying it was easy to avoid hits, but it was uh, it was a lot more convenient than just lying on the ground and not being able to do anything when there's like five guys. Yeah, exactly, because I know even though you can shoot, it doesn't even seem to matter. A zombie's right there. It doesn't. You're already no. done. And, you know, the AI is all right sometimes. Uh, yeah, I, it's, I kind of fu- I thought thought at first, like, it was just as uh, go- bad as Sheva. And then I was like, well, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, it is kind of bad as Sheva. I thought it was better, and I thought it was the same. It's just it kind of falls in between. Uh, they're whatever. I feel like the health system in this game was very inconsistent. Like, sometimes you'd get hit by a zombie and you'd lose one square of health. Okay, cool. But, like, sometimes the same zombie would bite you and you'd suddenly be losing, like, three yeah, or that's four squares of health. And then all of a sudden you'd be in danger. It's like, I don't know, it feels like Resident Evil 4 and 5 were actually, like, challenging in the whole health system kind of thing, where, like, it actually made you satisfied whenever you would, like, look after your health and try to survive and, like, combine herbs to increase your health meter in 4. In this game, it just kind of feels like the technical problems are making the game harder. Yeah, exactly. Rather than the game actually offering a challenge. Yeah. And, um, you know, this also brings me to the the shop system. I don't know if you want to go over that right now, well, but... we should definitely talk about it, because uh, the shop system... I mean, most of the stuff in RE4 and 5, including the merchant and just, you know, the random shop you would go to after each chapter... Most of the stuff mm-hmm. was useful. Most of the guns you can pick, you can upgrade to your liking. You can pick what kind of gun you want to your liking. It's still kind of like survival, you know. You're trying to pick the one that you really think will be good, and you gotta sell, and you gotta, uh, you know, keep. You gotta keep your money organized, and you gotta make sure you don't spend too much. You know, don't gives you that little feeling of kind of trying to survive. This thing with the skill points, I found most of the things useless. Uh, mm-hmm. They're just some of them don't even work. Uh, they don't seem to work. It just doesn't. It looks like you're just wasting skill points. It feels like if like maybe they do work, uh, maybe you know like they do something, but you don't really get that feeling. You don't really like kind of notice the difference between whether they work or whether they don't work. Yeah, and. You know, I kind of like, I really miss an RE4 and 5 where you could just buy your weapons, you could customize your items, your loadouts, whatever. Um, and it kind of gave you more of like, a, like, okay, this is me, this is me, this is a me feeling, you know? Yeah. This is my character, this is my guns, exactly. my equipment. I'm going to like, you, you can know, arrange strategize. it to whatever you want. Yeah. You had an item box, you know, an RE5. You had like it feels like you had a lot more choice rather than just picking up a gun in the level and then not being able to do anything. That's another with it. thing. The the upgrading system is completely lost in this game. They dropped it. The guns are already just named. Uh, there's like it's just it's so ridiculous how they did it now. It's like it's like your freedom's being cut. <laughs> 909. The 909, yeah. Like, <laughs> what the hell is that? It just seems like it's being cut. Like, it's not a problem. The guns are alright. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like, I miss the freedoms that we kind of had in the last two games. Uh, well, like, with, with the... You know how you said where you don't really get that feel of shooting people? Yeah. And, like, you don't get that power? Well, like, 
you know, it kind of makes it seem like the guns in this game don't even matter. They don't. It kind of it kind of reminds me of Raccoon yeah, City. Yeah, I was about to say that. Every gun was exactly the same. No gun made any difference. It was just okay. Here's, here's a assault. shotgun and like. Honestly, pistol. like if you like take the tack rifle in this game, and then you take the bear commander. They're exactly the same thing. You know, the 909 is the same thing as the wing shooter. The only noticeable difference between handguns, I thought, was the picador, and that's my favorite yeah, handgun. Yeah, same. I can agree I, with that. I don't that. know about anyone else, but, like, yeah. Um, and that's the one that Helena uses, correct? Yeah. Yeah, Helena uses it. Uh, I know Carla uses it in Mercenaries. That's one of the reasons why I love playing as Carla. I can agree with that, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't really like her as a character in story, but I already said yeah. that. And, so, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, that's the skill points. Now, keep in mind, what we're actually talking about, we're not just saying, we're not just bashing the game. We're just saying what's wrong with it. The game has a lot of good parts yeah. to it. It's still a good game. We're just saying, we're just having a discussion about Resident Evil 6 in general. Now, because, like I said, we're starting off with the bad things. Now, there... And, like, well, like, guys, if you're listening to this and you, you're annoyed by it or, like, you're going to dislike it just because we don't have the same opinion as you, Please take the consideration of our opinions. Please do. Just don't randomly dislike it because you're annoyed or something. We're not, like Anthony said, we're not bashing the game. I remember when uh, Anthony uploaded the demo video of us back in July, and someone said, guys, please stop complaining, it's annoying, but good vid. You know? Yep. And we're not trying to be trolls, we're not trying to hate on the game, we're just stating our opinion from now, fans. If you like the game like we're fans yeah if you if, if you like the game and you don't mind these difficulties then cool more power to you you know you appreciate the game more than us that's for sure yeah and we're resident evil fans and we, of course we take in resident evil 6 we we like the game okay but yeah now but i we can clearly say when me or richard anyway we like resident evil 5 more than resident evil 6 now that's just our opinion okay mm. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of flack from that, but some people might agree. Some people might think that RE4 was better than RE5 and 6. I can see your perspective on that, kind of. But, you know, at the same time, you know, to each his own. Well, yeah, I definitely can see that perspective. I mean, I think 4 and 5 kind of go hand in hand with each other. And, uh, you know, I can't really put 4 above 5, and I can't put 5 above 4. I like them equally. So... You know, if I were to ever do a top 10 Resident Evil game list, I'd have a very tough time doing that. It would that. be very tough. Because I, I, like, I love 4 and 5 so much. And then 6 just kind of like, I don't know, I like 6 as a game, but it just doesn't really like, it doesn't have that flair that 4 and 5 have. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's just, maybe that comes out in the campaigns, like we said. It's not as effective, it's not as strong. But... Another, just one last thing that I wanted to talk about, well, that was, that I didn't really like, was the censorship in the game. A lot of censored oh, yeah. things, uh, more censored things this time around. RE5 had a little bit more brutal deaths. Um, and I thought RE5 was bad with the censored chainsaw, but this one is really censored, especially when zombies rip out, like, your intestines or something. Mm -hmm. You don't really see it. It's like, it rips out your intestines, but you still see your clothes perfectly fine, pristine. Uh, a lot of things are censored, cut out. Um... The blood doesn't really... It's just some of the graphics aren't up to par with what RE5 was. Maybe it's just a different tone of the game. Uh, I think like the game had better lighting, and some things looked more detailed, but then like at the same time, there was so much stuff in this game that some things definitely did look muddier than exactly. RE5. Yeah. Um, you know, some moments it looks way better than characters look RE5. good, I think. Yeah, the models are beautiful. Uh, well, they are. I mean, and I say that because like they're very detailed. You see the um, sweat and every, things. Like that's cool. Yeah, ev you know, every character in Resident Evil is always attractive. They're always strong. They're like, they uh, they're portrayed realistically in terms of appearance, and I really like that. But then sometimes you get like you know the details on some of the zombies look really bland. Yeah. Uh, sometimes like the environments look blah. And the but deaths the most are part, it really is, stupid. It too. is a beautiful looking game, don't get me wrong. The deaths seem just um, very tacked on as well. I, I just think that, like, yeah. why are they censoring it? So they're just... I hate it, like, how if you died... Most of the time, if you die in this game, it's because you didn't see it coming. And it's very... It, the game's filled with cheap deaths. Oh, yeah. 
And you can't deny that because if you're walking through that subway, you don't even know if the train's going to hit you. Or if you go, if you even go to avoid the train, sometimes it hits you. That's just an example, though. Uh, I think the quick time events are more cheap because there's just so many of yeah. them and so sudden. But I like, miss the quick times during the cutscenes as well. I mentioned that before. Oh, During yeah, the live yeah. action uh, cutscenes, like, you know, Wesker on the back of Or like when he was trying to crash Ouroboros and stuff when they're on the plane and stuff like that. That was a that was a very epic cutscene or like when you fought Krauser. Yeah, like, like stuff like that. They took that out and I missed that as well. It adds a little bit epicness yeah. to the thing, like, but they took it out. I liked it when like they did quick time quick time reactions uh well. But in this game it just feels like, okay, you know, we, we kinda like came up with the whole quick time thing. I forget if it was either RE4 or God of War, but those were like the they first came out games. around the same time, so they didn't really copy any. It was just kind of, but like yeah, but like in RE6, it's like uh, the quick time events. They're not really like they're they're just thrown in there just for the sake of being there. Yeah, and I mean there there's just it's just I don't know. It just kind of takes away from it. But the death scenes are very censored. Japanese, I guess, like censoring their things because you compare something like this to Dead Space and. And, mm -hmm. Well, apparently decapitation is illegal in Japan, and I think that's a little weird because this is just RE4 fiction. Had RE4 had decapitated. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but like, uh, it seems like you know the death scenes are very censored and very very bad. But when they do happen, they go on and on and on, and you're just waiting for the option to continue. Yeah. Like you're just like waiting the zombie for that eating and turning the towards the screen. I fucking hate that. Yeah, it just, like, it goes on forever when, like, the Usana kills you or the Chainsaw guy kills you. It goes on for literally, like, 10, 15 seconds. Like, come on, I just want to restart my checkpoint. Yeah, exactly. And in 4 and 5, it was instant. Like, it would just, like, it would show a cool death scene and then, like, yes or no would pop yeah, up. Yeah, and, I mean, don't get me started with the dodging. Some enemies you can dodge, some enemies you can't, like, the blood shots jumping on you. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Little broken mechanics like that really just... I don't know. It just really gets on my nerves. Well, when you when you say dodge, you mean like uh, break, away. break away. Like if they yeah. grab you. Yeah, because, you know, some people are going to say, well, you can just like, roll to the left with a bloodshot. Well, yeah, you could, but if a bloodshot actually does pounce on you, there's nothing yeah, there's you can nothing do you could to do. get that fucker off. And, but you could do it yeah. with anything else. Like a zombie, you can, you know, press RT at the right time or use your analog mm -hmm. stick to get out. Bloodshots just jump on you, and depending on which mode you're on, you're fucked. I mean, some of the quick time events when they do grab you are very unforgiving. Exactly. Like sometimes it's very easy to get away, and then all of a sudden it just becomes really impossible. Yeah, and I think like you know, when when you when it all comes down to it, okay, guys, Resident Evil Six is okay. Well, let's just talk about what we like about the game because we did get the negatives out of the way. So. Looking at Resident Evil 6 as a whole, you, you guys just heard what we didn't really like about it. Because this is just discussion, so we're just throwing stuff out there. Well, Resident Evil 6, at the end of the day, is a solid is a solid shooter. Solid, you know, kind of action, sci-fi thing going on. You know, whatever you want to call it. I wouldn't really say horror. <laughs> um, is it a solid Resident Evil game? Uh, I don't know. Okay, it's mm. very, very forgettable. Um... The, I enjoy playing it, though. The campaigns are pretty fun. Co-op is very fun. Uh, Mercenaries is one of the sort of really the saving factor of this game. Agent Hunt yeah. is just boring. Anyway, but I never tried Agent Hunt. I'm not even going to bother with that not, mode. It's kind of like Left 4 Dead, where like you people play the campaign, and like, you got to try to kill them. So, yeah. kind of ripped people, off. You play as uh, the monsters or whatever. But... Um, the game is very fun. Uh, is it addicting? Hell no. I'm sorry, but it's not. Mm. And I didn't get the feeling like I did from RE4 and RE5 where I always wanted to play the game all the time. Um, but the game has you know, some solid graphics, great, great voice work, um, and the mm -hmm. story was pretty decent for what it was. They did try to make everything kind of intertwine. There were some plot holes. Um, the gameplay is pretty smooth most of the time. And when you're playing with a co-op partner, it's very fun. Uh, Mercenaries co-op is really fun. There's not as much replay value this time around. Um, that's mostly because of the game itself. Um, you know, it's mm -hmm. kind of like when you're done, you're just kind of like, okay, I need to kind of take a break. I didn't get that with RE4 and 5. Um, 
but the game itself is just it's it's still a decent game. It's a good game. I don't I don't like giving game ratings, as you guys know. Same with like movies. I don't like giving movie ratings. But if I had to really give it a rating, just so you guys get the main idea, I'd probably give it like an eight point five out of a ten. Yeah. Because I'd probably give it like a a seven point five or an eight out of ten. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's in the same range, basically. I mean, it's just our opinion, guys, and a lot of people will di- disagree, but Resident Evil 6 just wasn't what I expected, okay? Mm-hmm. Basically, I think Richard can agree. It just wasn't what we expected as Resident Evil fans after all these years, yeah. especially after well, RE5. Like, compared, compared to 4 and 5, I mean, like I'd give 4 like a 9.5 or a 10. Give it a 10. Same with 5. I'd give 5 like yeah. a 9.5 or a 10. Like... With six, I was just so so excited for it by watching all the trailers and just you know being curious to see how the story would play out. Um, but like I I always had this feeling of fear or this like I was worried that Jill wasn't going to show up because she was never mentioned in any of the the news that we heard of. She was never shown in the yeah. trailers or the demos. So I was kind of like I kind of got my hopes up in that department where. Okay, maybe sometime in Chris's campaign we'll see an appearance from Jill, and maybe we'll have bonus mercenary characters. Like maybe we'll get to play as Jill and Hunk and Claire. Exactly. You know, like if they're if they're adding all these main characters into the story, well, not they're not really adding everybody, but like Leon and Chris are finally meeting in a cutscene. You know, I kind of wanted to see everyone else, like Jill and uh, and Claire and all them. And we never really saw that. And now we have to wait for DLC to see these characters, if they even make DLC. I don't think so. This. Like, I don't think so in that department. I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, they'll, they'll eventually make DLC, like they did with Area 5. And, you know, Capcom always makes DLC for their games. Capcom has a knack for uh, releasing DLC that's already on the disc. Oh, you already have it, but you have to pay to unlock that it. That Raccoon City is pretty infamous for that one. Yeah, you know, it kind of makes me miss last gen when you would just play a game and unlock whatever was on the disc. And you got what you actually paid game. for. Like 50 bucks yeah. back then, you know, for like a GameCube, PS2, or or like, Xbox game. Not even like last gen, but if you compare this to RE5, RE5 had like eight mercenary maps that you had to unlock in the game. Yeah. And RE6 has three mercenary maps that you can only play unless you buy the other three. So then when you, like, buy the other three maps, you still only have six maps. RE5 had more maps than that. Hell, even RE4 had more maps they were than all fucking free. RE6. They are all free. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. Resident Evil 6, though, it is it is a decent game. And we don't hate Resident Evil 6. We don't hate it. It just it could have been way better than we expected. If there's an RE7, please make it one campaign. And please, you got to do something with the gameplay. And they got to get a little bit of uh, r- better writing in there to fix up these, pa- like, patch up these yeah. plot holes. I mean, you know, I thought the interactions between characters were cool, but they always have these plot holes where, like, uh, for example, like, back in January when we didn't even know who Jake was. We thought it was Alex. I, th- I thought it was Alex because if you go to the computer in Lost in Nightmares... There were two Wesker children still alive. There was Albert. There was Alex. Yeah. What happened to Alex? We have no idea. Um, I forgot about him. Made Jake then. Like, yeah, I was so let down when I heard that it was like this guy named Jake. I'm like, what? They're adding like just they're what? No. Um. But but yeah, I I have a question for you, Anthony. Sure. What would you like to see in Resident Evil Seven? Like, what would be your dream version of Resident Evil 7? Okay, that's a great question. All right, well, what I would like to see in Resident Evil 7 is, one, I would like to see one campaign. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely, well, before I touch on characters, I would definitely like to see the original game, you know, game original style gameplay that we got in 4 and 5 that felt very solid and very complete. I would like Mm -hmm. to see... A new inventory system like Resident Evil 4 or 5. Uh, I mm-hmm. didn't really like the inventory system in this game. We didn't really talk about that, but it's it's like it it was very different. In RE5, it wasn't it wasn't like RE4, but it was still worked. It was just quick and easy, and it was just little boxes you can do. I would like to see something like that. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I would like to see more br- brutality kind of in the game. I want to get a bit more dramatic. I want I want this to be like RE4, where you yeah. really felt that that vibe of like, wow, that's freaking intense. And that's what Resident Evil used to be, intense games. A lot, even RE5 had very intense moments. And I think that Resident Evil 6 lacked that. So in Resident Evil 7, I would like to see that. I would like to see, well, for characters. For story, I honestly don't really know. But I would like to see a story that somehow connects to RE6. And like kind of how RE, like RE6 failed to connect with RE5. I want it to connect to RE6 and fix up those plot holes. And, mm-hmm. and that can mean returning some characters. I wouldn't really like to see Chris again. We've seen him for two games. Okay, I think it's time yeah. to kind of lay him to rest for a little while. I would like True. to see maybe Jill or Claire. Mm-hmm. Something beyond mm-hmm. those lines. I would like to see something with... Uh, something with... Uh, Hmm. Well, because once you roll it, because we already have Leon on the list. I mean, I would just like to see some, maybe something with Claire or maybe something just like, I know Jill got her own game with Revelations, but I really don't know. If they could yeah, do. Revelations was released on the 3DS, though, and not everybody has a 3DS. Yeah, that's true. And that's what bugs me. Maybe they didn't think to include Jill because she was in Revelations, but not everybody gets the chance to play that game. And I thought that was kind of, eh, you know, maybe it wasn't true, but whatever. Yeah. But I mean, in RE7, I would like to see possibly Claire, um, possibly, you know, if you want to include Leon, you could. I don't know. It's really hard to think of the characters that they can really add in. Uh, I yeah. just hope we, we, in RE7, I just want a better game overall. I want a way better story. I want way better characters that... Well, you know, not like the characters in this one are good, but I want them to introduce characters that we already know and not keep creating these characters that we'll never see again. Because to us mm-hmm. fans that really care, that matters. When RE7 will be announced or is coming out, we're going to be expecting, you know, we're going to be expecting to see characters that are familiar, not new characters all the time. In RE6, it was inevitable, but we didn't know they were going to be so forgettable. I don't want forgettable characters in RE7. I want a better gameplay system. I want a smoother, just better story, just that kind of flows very well and is very dramatic. For characters, mm-hmm. I don't really know about that. I can't really say much about that because I honestly don't know. But I would like to see something different. I would like to see something different. Yeah. If that is, you know, like I, I'd, I'd like to, uh, like I agree with you on the um, brutality. I think the game should be a lot more violent. And I think the game should be a lot more explicit with the gore and the death. Um, I want to see a return of the RE4 inventory system, but I also want them to make it so that you can still quick draw your weapons in game without yes. pressing the pause menu. So ha- kind of include like a hybrid of both RE4 and 5 inventory. Um, I want to see Jill Valentine as the main character. Because she's my favorite character, and I'd like to actually see her in a next-gen game fully. Because, yeah, she was in 5, but she was barely in the campaign in 5. And then you only had her in Mercenaries. But I kind of wanted to be like Resident Evil 3, where Mm. she was the main character in the story. Um, I want a single-player narrative, not four campaigns. I want one really long campaign. Like RE4. RE4 took me me, uh, 25 hours to beat on my first playthrough. Yep. And that's a lot, so I want it to be lengthy as well. If I have no problem with co-op. Co-op's fine. But make it so that if you're playing solo, eliminate the AI partner following you. Because I don't want someone following me. I don't want to have to wait up for someone. I want to be alone. I prefer being alone. Um, and that's another thing. I'd really like to see Hunk. Because we haven't seen Hunk in a main game since exactly. 2. And yeah, he was a bonus character in four, but I want Somehow I want him to actually there. be in the story, yeah. you know. If I saw Jill and Hunk, great. That would be, you know, my favorite. My two favorite characters are yeah. Jill and Hunk, so I'd love to see that. Um, you know, I want it to be darker in terms of atmosphere. I want the single player to be very scary, but I want the mercenaries to be action packed and have the same addictiveness that four and five have. Even six. 
Yeah, so, yeah, 6 has a really good mercenaries mode. In fact, I kind of like the mercenaries mode in 6 because enemies don't grab you as much as That's they did in 5. Did. And it's a bit easier than it was in 4. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, you don't have to return to zombies. Because um, really, you know, zombies, uh, they're cool and they're, they're pretty much the staple, the most common enemy in Resident Evil. Pretty much. But it's also about, like, bioweapons yeah, and shit. Yeah, it's like... Hel- even if they, like, you know, transferred over to paranormal horror, and it doesn't even have to be, like, you know, supernatural shit. Maybe they m- create a virus that makes you hallucinate. And since it's still, like, sticking with that infection kind of thing, it still has viruses, but at the same time, if you're hallucinating, then you can come up with all sorts of crazy ideas. Yeah, I mean, this game just proved that even if you have zombies and incorporate that original spec that Ari, Ari, the original trilogy had, like for the PS1, say, it doesn't mean it's going to be a flawless game, Capcom. You know, you got to really do it right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they did do it de- decent in RE6, but I agree. I mean, yeah. RE7, I would, I, the reason why I didn't say I would just, like, jill off the spot all for a main characters because I just feel like they're not going to do it. But yeah, I can agree with you though. It would be nice to see her back. But I wanted to connect with like Chris. I, I the chemistry mm. between them is so broken. The last time we really saw I want, was I want nightmares. You know when she fell out the window. I want Chris and Jill to kind of like, um, at least kind of talk about hidden feelings or something, because we all know something's there. Okay, you can't bullshit that. Yeah, really. <laughs> but they ne- Capcom never really builds up on any relationship. Hey, maybe they are just best friends. But, you know, kind of make it so that they are best friends or something. Because, come on, if I was Chris in RE5 and I just found out that my best friend slash partner slash, you know, really attractive girl that I know is actually alive and not dead, I wouldn't just be saying, Jill, are you Okay. You know, Joe. Well, <laughs> like, you know, uh, like you said, you thought Chris was going to kiss her. I thought he was just going to give her a hug or something. No. <laughs> it's almost like these characters have no compassion sometimes. Yeah, it's... But, um, I, I mean, Chris Redfield, I just, I love his emotion. I love his character, what he brings to it. Yeah. Um, You're right, though. I hope there is some chemistry between them uh, in, in, in the future. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, it's, it's just... You really need to. They really need to buckle down on some of that stuff. If you don't really go back to, if you don't really want to explain certain things, um, and RE6 about the virus, how the hell they contained it, even though it was already spreading, stuff like that. Um, that's fine because RE6 again is kind of forgettable. Okay, yeah. not that it, despite being a good game, some of the story, some of the plot holes, even though. It would make the game would actually make more sense, and it would kind of make it better if they were filled. At the end of the day, if they make another one, and don't really go back to or re- reference it. That's fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, I that's it's just Capcom's in starting to. I'm, I'm starting to lose faith in Capcom. Yeah, I, I saw like well, two other things for the Resident Evil Seven thing. Um, just include both classic camera angles and over the shoulder oh, yes. that way you please uh you please both modern and veteran fans and even you know the hardcore fans with sticks up their asses yeah. but like um and if you are going to reference r6 or bring any characters from r6 please bring in helena because i loved helena in r6 but she didn't really like have that much of a backstory they didn't really do much with her characters yeah, and you know, I like I liked Helena, and I I wish I could see more from Helena, but they didn't really do enough of her, and it was kind of the same with Sherry. So you know, those were two highlights of RE6, I think, Sherry and Helena. Of but you know, uh, bring it. You know, if you're gonna bring in a character from RE6, bring in Helena because she was only in one game. She didn't have much to do. Of course. Uh, I mean, she was a catalyst. Don't get me wrong. She started a chain of events, but. It made it seem like she wasn't really there all that much, and I just want right. to see more from her personality and her character and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, I kind of forgot what I was gonna say. What were you talking about? <laughs> um, I was talking about I mean, like, uh, the plot holes. Yeah, um, plot holes. And how like if I was they gonna don't say touch something. On it, it wouldn't matter because it's kind of forgettable. Eh. 
Alright. No, I was gonna say something like... Because I just want to get the RE7 crap out of the way, and then like, okay, whatever. I forgot what I was going to say. To we got the point you, across. I mean, I mean, I want to. I want to. Re- I'm going to be rewatching this, and I'm going to be like, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. Well, I mean, I don't know, guys. Well, this was just our discussion. I think we can end it here because we're going on for a good like 47 <laughs> minutes. But that's what I wanted. I wanted a nice long discussion. I always, I wanted to do something like this back in the summer with Richard, but I never got the chance to, and I decided, you know. Whatever. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. This wasn't us bashing it. This was just a discussion about Resident Evil 6. That's basically what this video is going to be called. Um, and uh, it was just our opinions. And at the end of the day, like we said, we gave our ratings. It's a decent game. It just wasn't what we expected. And we still play Resident Evil 6. We, we don't, like, hate it. We don't rebel against it. It's, it's still a decent game. Uh, we just prefer RE5. We, you know prefer the predecessor and and that's like that's Mm -hmm. just what it is and i hope you guys just enjoyed this conversation if you guys you know like this and actually um you know comment and let me know what you think and maybe i want to hear some of your guys opinions on resident evil 6 maybe you guys disagree with us and that's fine if you disagree to say look i kind of disagree because so and so and so because we got, I respect, I will respect all your guys' opinions. Me and Richard don't always agree on the same thing, but we respect each other's opinions without getting angry. So just don't be like, oh, mm-hmm. fuck you guys. You guys don't know what you're talking about. It's just like, no, I mean, it's tell, so guys, I'm asking you, leave a comment below and tell me what you think about Resident Evil 6 or what you thought about it if you played it. If you haven't played it, will you play it? Uh, just say something. And, and if you want to see more of these, let us know. Um, but like I said, the next thing you'll probably see is a Let's Play. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but the voting is still going on. I'll leave it up for probably another week or so. Um, but uh, yeah. So anyway, guys. I'm Anthony. That's Richard. And also check out his account in the description below. Um, subscribe. He does like he's do Well, he actually just finished up Resident Evil Director's Cut. Technically Resident Evil 1 as a Let's Play. Check him out. And if you and actually check him out too, I don't want you to subscribe to him just because I'm telling you to subscribe. See if you like his material. He's trying to. He had, you know, problems in the past with getting getting up there. So please help him out if you actually like his material. Subscribe and stay stay tuned. Um, and I we also did some. Me and him did some mercenaries videos on his account, and we did a co-op run on the new public demo. Right before RE6 release mm-hmm. back in September. And we did Desperate Escape and Lost of Nightmares, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we did that. All in one video. Yeah. We did that in whole one video. So there's some material that you guys probably didn't even know existed. If you want to go check it out, go and click this description below and go to his account and just go through his videos and see what you like. And uh, so anyway, guys, I appreciate you guys for stopping by. Let's play coming soon. Um... And, uh, yep, thanks for uh, stopping by, so see you guys later.